Did you ever use a rehearsal space or studio in town that really felt special to you? Was, was there a tectonic event where you were in a studio space that meant something to you? Boy, every time I've been in the studio, we never had like a rehearsal space. Somebody always had a garage to rehearse in or mm -hmm. a basement. You know, but when you when I first started recording, my first project was at a place called Johnny Audio, which was Dale Gullett uh -huh. and the limited warranty guys. Mm -hmm. Tascam, I think a one-inch machine, 16 probably. Great engineer, Dale. And that was early project that was like a mix of band and solo guitar stuff. It was very Billy McLaughlin potpourri kind of a thing. And because people kept saying, you know, I, I like your music, but sometimes I want to hear the band and sometimes I want to hear guitar. The next thing I did after my debut, it was just called Billy McLaughlin. It was, it, what do they call that? Eponym Eponymous. Eponymous. That's the correct. <laughs> yeah. It was like 89 into 90. I started recording two albums at once. One of them was at Selma Gundy down in Northfield. It was a solo guitar record I did with Steve McKinstry. The studio is still there. Steve is still working, doing some cool stuff. And the band, I didn't want to have travel all the way down to Northfield, you know, every time we were going to record. So we did one of those lockouts at Creation when it was still called Creation. Yeah. Lord knows what it's called now. You know, and it was a mix of working in Studio B and then in the big room sometimes in A. Mm -hmm. And I think when I walked out and I, some dude was sitting on the couch and he was watching, it, I'm not making this up. There was some Woodstock documentary that was being pumped into the lobby area. And this guy's gone. I didn't recognize him. This is embarrassing. He goes, you know, God darn it, I was supposed to play at that deal. And my manager told me it was going to be stupid and, no, and it was just a waste of time. And I still want to wring that guy's neck. And it was, it was Steve Miller oh, yeah. recording... A bunch of his hits over again with Billy Peterson and Ricky Peterson yeah. and Gordy Knudsen on like his road band. Yeah, and I'm sitting there and I didn't I didn't recognize him, and until I I was going like that dude is doing a cover a cover album of Steve Miller, but it was Steve <laughs> Miller. And it wasn't until Billy came on and I go oh. Oh, now I get it. You know, yeah. I'm being pretty. But to work in a room, you know, that that cranked out some hits in its day, you know. Yeah. A lot of gold records on the wall of that place. Absolutely. It was Chopper or whether it was, you know, Steve or... All the way back. Did you record... You've recorded in Creation? I have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've worked with John Fields there, who now has oh, a studio there. Yeah. Uh, Steve Weiss, right, yeah, is the Steve proprietor. Um, yeah. He's still got Studio A, I think yeah. it's his. And booking agency and my my record label proton because it's the smallest positively charged particle oh, in the universe wow, I right love that. so that's where proton productions kevin daly and he stole it from you yeah. well, oh. no i gave it to him I, <laughs> I i i got so busy and kevin and i met on the naca circuit and i booked so many gigs from my first conference playing the wisconsin when it was its own region i couldn't keep up and i said kevin will you take over and he he grew it Mm. and went on to be at Monterey Peninsula, and now has North Star artist Kevin Daly. was a big part of the early touring. 